Reverend Father Jordan Orbe of the Society of Jesus as we join the choir in singing the entrance hymn. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Magandang tanghali po, mga kapatid. The opportunity to pray and worship the Lord is a gift from God. And so we gather with grateful hearts for this chance to give honor to Him, to pray to Him and to experience His presence in our hearts and in the sacrament. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we recall humbly our need always for God's mercy and God's forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, he and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Please stay here. The Lord has sent me on to the Jordan. As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you, Elisha replied. And so the two went on together. Fifty of the guild prophets followed, and when the two stopped at the Jordan, they stood facing them at the distance. Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up, and struck the water which divided, and both crossed over on dry ground. When they had crossed over, Elijah said to Elisha, Ask for whatever I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha answered, May I receive a double portion of your spirit? You have asked something that is not easy, Elijah replied. Still, if you, if you see me taken up from you, your wish will be granted. Otherwise, not. 
As they talked, as they walked on conversing, a flaming chariot and flaming horses came between them, and Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. When Elisha saw it happen, he cried out, My father, my father, Israel's chariots and drivers. But when he could no longer see him, Elisha gripped his own garment and tore it in two. Then he picked up Elijah's mantle that had fallen from him and went back and stood at the bank of the Jordan. Wielding the mantle that had fallen from Elijah, Elisha struck the water in his turn and said, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? When Elisha struck the water, it divided and he crossed over. The Word of the Lord. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. How great is the goodness of the Lord, which you have in store for those who fear you, and which toward those who take refuge in you, you show in the sight of the children of men. Response. You hide them in the shelter of your presence from the plottings of men. You screen them within your abode from the strife of tongues. Response. Love the Lord, all you his faithful ones. The Lord keeps those who are constant, but more than requites those who act proudly. Response. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. Please rise as we honor the Holy Gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. me will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him alleluia the lord be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to matthew the lord is here. jesus said to his disciples take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise, you will have no recompense from your Heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, to win the praise of others. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your almsgiving may be secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will repay you. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on street corners so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door, and pray to your Father in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you may not appear to others to be fasting, except to your Father who is hidden, and your Father 
who sees what is hidden will repay you. The Gospel of the Lord. In March of this year, 2014, Time Magazine came out with a statistic with a list of cities in the world that are the selfiest. Selfiest. Pinakamaraming tao na nagsiselfie. I guess, I, do I need to explain what selfie is? Nanay ko nga na magsi-70 years old, alam ang selfie. Well, selfie is when you take pictures of yourself. When you're eating, when you're uh, traveling, lahat na lahat. No? So, selfie. And the places where the most number of selfies were taken, uh, at least in the top 10, and the top 1, alam nyo kung saan? Number 9, alam nyo kung saan? Cebu, Cebu City. May mga taga Cebu ba dito? At ang pinaka, pinaka-selfiest, pinaka na selfiest pa talaga, alam nyo kung saan? Makati. And Pasig. So, meron ba mga taga Makati at Pasig dito? Nako, alam na. <laughs> so, we live in a world, in a selfie world. When you think about it, we define our lives by a series of milestone selfies. Diba? My career, my accomplishments, my skills, my possessions, my relationships, my reputation. And yes, it is vital for us to define ourselves, to forge this identity for ourselves. We cannot live naman without a sense of who we are. But this self can never be the sole defining factor of our life. Building up the self can never be the absolute motivation of our actions. To do so would lead to anxiety and fear. To an incessant need to prove the self. To acquire things. To possess and control in order to build up the self. It can lead to so much aggression, to hostility, when, you're, when yourself is threatened. <coughs> In other words, too much pain and misery. Psychologists call this egotism, which, if unchecked, can lead to a disorder. Narcissistic personality disorder. Our spiritual tradition calls this pride. The Gospel today contains Jesus' teaching about a kind of spiritual selfie. How a subtle and insidious form of pride finds its way even into the holiest and most noble of actions. How doing spiritual and cor corporal works of mercy end up being disordered. Jesus enjoins his disciples that when they do these worthy things, almsgiving, prayer, fasting, they should aspire to be hidden. To not call attention to their good deeds. But maybe we'll say, eh, di ba nga? In that same uh, part of Matthew's Gospel, Jesus himself says, uh, Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works. Di ba sinabi din Jesus yun? So is this a contradiction? But when Jesus says that, when he says, let your light shine, he also says at the end, that they may see your good works and glorify whom? 
the Father. Not glorify yourself. This is the proper order. And to put the self front and center is a disorder. It's not in the proper order. There is a Tibetan Buddhist teaching that, self, that says self-cherishing. Self-cherishing is the root of all suffering. Now, self-cherishing here doesn't mean caring and valuing the self. This teaching doesn't mean we should not respect and take care of the self. What this teaching talks about is fixating on the self. It talks about grasping, possessing. It is about our efforts to acquire, to add embellishments to the self. It reminds us the more we try to protect and build up the self, the more suffering we cause in ourselves and in the world. And if you just reflect for a moment, all your experiences of anger, of negativity, of resentment, of conflict, there's great probability that what fuels these is a kind of fixatedness on the self. Inuuna ang sarili. Hindi pwedeng magkamali. Hindi pwedeng pangunahan. Hindi pwedeng matalo. Ironically, the way out of this fixation with the self is to get to know the self even more. And to discover our inner truth helps us to let go of the need to be so self-involved. To know the self is to forget the self. And for us, what is this inner truth? This inner truth is nothing less than the love of the Father. The love of the Father that sees what is hidden. So if we get in touch with the love that the Father has for all of us, in our hearts, if we know just how much the Father cares for us, provides for us, gives Himself to us, His Son and His Spirit to dwell in us, then we don't need to prove ourselves so much. And the more we empty ourselves of the self, the more open we can to be to God's indwelling. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, as we continue to pray in this Mass, let us learn from the words of Jesus. And let us pray for the grace that we will be so steeped, so in touch with the love that God has for us in the hiddenness of our hearts so that we may not need anymore to build up ourselves but instead be assured in the providence and the goodness and the mercy of our loving God. Let us all stand for our prayers. <coughs> Let us pray today to the God of truth and love for truthfulness and sincerity in the church and in the world. As we say, keep us blameless in your sight, O Lord. that the Church may take to heart the task of the mission of renewal, so that Christ may be clearly perceived by all. Let us pray to the Lord. Give us blameless in your sight, O Lord. That priests and religious may be assiduous proclaimers of the Gospel through their witness of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Give us blameless in your sight, O Lord. That civic and community leaders may be sincere and unselfish in their effort to bring justice, dignity, and unity to the people they are called to serve. Let us pray to the Lord. Give us in your sight, O Lord. That the sick, 
and those who see God's special love and care through the concern of their families. Let us pray to the Lord. That the dead may enjoy God's everlasting peace. Let us pray to the Lord. And so let's let us pray for all of those who have asked us for prayers, those who have special intentions, those who are celebrating special occasions today, those who are sick and suffering. For them we pray, keep us blameless in your sight, O Lord. God our Father, help us to love and to serve you in spirit and in truth, through Jesus, who is our way to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Amen. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
announcements. The Lunch and Learn Series 11 is on Thursday, 26 June, 12 o'clock noon to 1 o'clock p.m. here at the Mini Theater. The topic will be the heart of the matter, engaging the culture with a Christian sexual ethic. Our guest speaker will be Father Joel Hasson, Dean of Studies, Theology at San Carlos Seminary and Director, Commission on Family and Life of the Archdiocese of Manila. 27 June, last Friday of the month, is the Solemnity of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. There will be a special Mass to be officiated by Bishop Emeritus Theodora Bacani Jr. from the Archdiocese of Nova Liches at the ADB Basketball Court. We will announce if there will be a change of venue, but for now it is at the ADB Basketball Court. There will be an extra day for the May Day B1 Handwritten Unity Bible, Writing and Selling of Travel Size Colored Bibles and Children's Books on Friday, 27 June. We encourage those who missed the HUB in ADB Writing in May to visit the Philippine Bible Society book table from 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock p.m. at the ADB Basketball Court. Please don't miss this chance. It will be a chance for you and your family to be part of this historic endeavor to provide 5 million Bibles to 5 million poor families. Sister Rita and the nuns of the Monastery of the Contemplative of the Two Hearts of Jesus and Mary, or COTH, would like to extend their sincere appreciation to those who continuously donate voluntarily for COTH's community expenses. For example, the daily food and utilities of their monastery in San Pablo's Laguna, the education support for 21 nuns from college, and Perpetual Eucharistic Reparative Adoration and other projects. For 2014, they are appealing to our generosity to help support their various projects. And these includes, number one, covered soup kitchen area to be used for, the catech for catechizing children ages 7 to 15 years old and for celebrating masses for poor families. Number two, parking and fencing of the San Pablo Monastery and number three, their continuing education and other community projects. The sisters from COTH regularly visits ADB every 15th of the month and would be very happy to receive your prayer petitions and donations. Sister Rita is at the West Core Lobby from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. And finally, we would like to thank Reverend Father Jordan Orbe, Society of Jesus, for celebrating the Mass with Thank you, Father. Let us pray. As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to thank the Living Light community and for all of you for uh, joining in our celebration of the Holy Eucharist uh, today. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go, seeking to put God first in all that we do. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Sa sabon ng